Well, hello there, everyone. This is Rona Palmer from eMain Enterprises, and I'd like to thank you for taking some time out of your out of your day and joining us for this month's best practices webinar. And with me on the line today, I'm pleased to have Dan Flowen, who is the president of Professional Materials Management, also known as PM2, and he'll be presenting today's topic, Keys to Setting Up a Successful Self-Serve Storeroom. And a little background on Dan before we get started. Dan has over 28 years experience in materials management, process control, industrial distribution, and particular expertise in operations management, inventory operation, and business process improvement. And Dan launched uh, Professional Materials Management, or PM2, back in 2001 with a vision of bringing a full suite of inventory management services to clients. And since the launch, he continues to expand into additional services arenas. And so, Dan, are you with me on the line? I am. Thanks, Rona. Yeah, and thanks for uh, take, you know, thanks to you, Dan, too, for taking time out and presenting this topic. And I know we've had uh, really quite a, we've had over a couple of hundred people sign up for the webinar. And as they are uh, starting to log in, maybe you can tell us a little bit, Dan, out of all the different services you offer and, you know, things you've seen over the decades. What made you, um, you know, uh, pick this topic of the self-serve storeroom for today's discussion? Well, I think, Rona, uh, especially when you look at uh, the, the current economic uh, environment with businesses, not to mention the, the way that technology has come so far and just recently, there's a lot of companies looking to get leaner and, uh, and, and trying to apply technology to this. So we have a lot of companies coming to us and saying, hey, can you help me you know, get, get to a place where I can manage this in more of an automated environment and, and try to reduce costs? So it's, it's, it's becoming a very um, you know, popular and wise thing to do in the right scenario. So. Uh, I thought this would be a good one to talk about since we, we're running into it more and more. So I appreciate the time today. Well, that's great. And uh, Dan, before I turn it over to you, let me just um, share a few small housekeeping items with our listeners on the line today. And to all the attendees out there who I see are still logging in, I have you on mute uh, because we are recording today's session. And uh, we'll share the link with all of you via email in case there's others on your team that weren't able to attend live. Um, you know, you can watch this uh, later on. Also, Dan has agreed to give a copy of today's slides, uh, make a PDF, and share that with you. And I'm sure he'll give you instructions later in the presentation with how to do so. But also, Dan has put together, you know, this is a big topic, and he's tried to put the highlights in his live presentation. Um, which will be about 25 minutes or so, but then he's also agreed to spend as much time as needed for the rest of the hour to answer your specific questions and uh, stick around for the Q&A. So I do invite you at any time during the presentation to please type your questions in on the GoToWebinar little taskbar that you have. There's a question center. And feel free to type your questions at any time. And then at the end of Dan's presentation, we'll go ahead and read them to him. All right, and uh, we'll also be doing a couple of polls where we're going to ask you for uh, some, some questions and you get to answer. This information is anonymous. It's not uh, shared on an individual basis, just in aggregate. So Dan gets a feeling for who's on the line with us today. So again, we invite you to participate. All right, well, uh, Dan, I think that's it for the housekeeping, and I'm going to turn the session over to you. Okay, thanks, Ron. I appreciate it, and thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Um, so I, I think to get the conversation started here, the first thing I need to do is to define what I mean by self-serve storeroom. And to, to us, that means a, a self-serve storeroom is a process whereby a, a technician or a mechanic can gain access to a, an inventory area and issue a part for themselves without the assistance of a storeroom attendant. So that's, that's how we define a self-serve storeroom. Now, I want to make one very clear distinction right up front, and that is this. A self-serve storeroom, 
while it may be unmanned, is definitely not unmanaged. Very, very important distinction. And we'll come back to that in a minute. But uh, right now, I, I wanted to, uh, we've got a couple of poll questions. And, and Ronan, if you'd launch the first one, we want to get a feel for uh, what, what, uh, where you guys are today with respect to your, uh, to your, to your storeroom. OK. So I've just launched the first poll. And what Dan is asking, which of these best fits your current state regarding a self-serve storeroom? So if you don't mind just going ahead and typing your responses in, just right on your keyboard. You don't answer them in the chat feature. Uh, instead, just type them right on your keyboard. And tell us which best fits your current state regarding a self-serve storeroom. You're currently running one or you've decided you'd like to do one, but you need a plan. You're in the process of setting one up right now. You're trying to decide whether or not this is something you'd like to set up, or you've never really thought about it, but something piqued your interest, so you're attending today's webinar. All right, so uh, if you go ahead and continue typing, it looks like we've had about two-thirds of the votes in. So let me leave the poll open for just a, a few more seconds. And we'll get your response. Again, your answers are anonymous. OK, it looks like everyone has responded. So let me go ahead and close it out and share the results. So Dan, what we're seeing is what our listeners have said. 31% say they're currently running a self-serve storeroom. 11% said we've decided to install one, but they could use some help with a plan. 21% said they're in the process of setting one up. That's interesting. So between in the process of or already have one, we have almost half of our listeners. 21% um, were trying to decide whether or not this is something to do. And 16% said, we've never really seriously considered it. OK? So I'm going to turn it back over to you, Dan. Very good. Thank you, Rona. Well, that's a great mix of, uh, of different uh, scenarios. So uh, I'll, I'll hope this uh, this has good uh, good uh, very uh, that is applicable to, to where you are. So so as I mentioned, when we go out and, and, and we're out in industry and in, in our travels, we're seeing a lot of companies that are looking for ways to get leaner. So here's just a couple of examples of of, of cases we see and hear quite a lot where you have your Maybe your senior storeroom attendant, John, who's been around for 30 plus years, and this guy, you know, he's got so much knowledge in his head that he, he would tell you that he knows where every part is in the plant, now, uh, whether he does or doesn't, in fact. But uh, you know, he's got a lot of information in there, and now he's now he's retiring, and the, the company's not planning to replace that position. Or you might be in a position where where the company, uh, the plant has, has you know, begun to realize the value of managing this, this large asset that you have and wants to get serious about managing it. But there's no, there's, there hadn't been any money set aside in the budget to staff the storeroom full time. So there's a, there's a host of ever, all kinds of reasons why you might be thinking about a storeroom, a self-serve storeroom, but uh, it's just two examples. Now, you may be, as some of you are, still considering whether or not to go toward a self-serve storeroom. And, and if, if the issue for you hasn't been decided already, I just, I just want to offer some, uh, just a general recommendation from our experience in seeing many storerooms over the years, and, and you know, some successful and some not so successful. And, and it's basically this. If, if you own a lot of inventory, and by a lot I mean, say, over a million dollars worth or more, and or you manage a lot of critical spare items, meaning these are the parts that are going to shut your plant down if you can't find it or if you run out. Um, it's, it's very likely that in that scenario, a well-trained storeroom attendant, somebody who's there all the time, will be able to pay for himself just by, it, by, uh, by the, the purchasing cost avoidance that, and, and downtime reduction that they're able to, uh, to help you avoid. So. Um, just something to consider. You know, a, a high dollar asset is probably worth managing. So if you can staff it, if you're in that scenario, 
um, I would recommend that you consider staffing it. If you cannot staff it, if this is just not something that's a reality for you, then, then I would offer these suggestions. These, this is what you, I would do the following. Number one, communicate, communicate, communicate. As we all know, the grapevine travels so much faster than you could ever communicate. So it just makes it so critical to start communicating right away. Unhealthy rumors and just misinformation will put you so far behind the curve if, if the wrong facts get out and, and, and you're, you're, while you're trying to, to communicate what the, the true plan really is and bring it to light. So start early in your communication and, and keep communicating. Um, throughout the process. You know, the idea is you know, obviously we want to seek buy-in and commitment from everyone that's going to be impacted by this change so that you have people that, are, that, are, uh, that become active and faithful participants in paving the, the way ahead and, and not naysayers or, or deterrents to the process. So you know, having said that, you know, the reality is you're, you're probably not going to make believers out of everyone. And some people are just going to staunchly refuse to embrace this change. And, and I guess this is the place where I, I have to say that the, the cost of mismanaging your inventory will very often outweigh the cost of training one or two new employees. So, so just be prepared to offer somebody who can't get on board with this thing a different career opportunity. Uh, an example I want to give you, we worked with a, a public school district not that long ago, and there was a huge rift between the management and the maintenance staff and very little communication. And it was just uh, just a very difficult communication environment. And and the, uh, the scenario was the 30-year-plus the store maintenant was uh, – retiring and 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 so you know that was a that was a a, a, a big loss from the maintenance standpoint uh, maintenance department standpoint and a lot of rumors and misinformation about it in fact we were you know we were actually engaged as a consultant in that in that case and they were coming to us asking for information so yeah there was a lot of animosity between those two groups so it was a very difficult uh, transition and it, and it frankly, was not a very successful one. And I, I'll give more details later on it. But the communication piece is so critical to, uh, to make it very clear and, 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 and gain that, that buy-in. So the next thing uh, I wanted to touch on is the, the, how important it is to designate a process owner. And, and right now I want to go back to the, for a moment to where I, I, I said at the beginning, uh, where a self-serve storeroom is unmanned but not unmanaged. And here's what I mean by that. Think about the 7-Eleven down the street where you stopped to top off your gas tank this morning. You probably swiped your card and you pumped your own gas, right? Then you might have noticed that your windshield was dirty, so you grabbed a squeegee from the windshield wash bucket and maybe a paper towel, and then you, you, you brought that windshield to a sparkling shine. And then the pump nozzle clicks off and signals that your tank is full, so you put the nozzle back in the pump, and then the pump prints you a receipt, and you continue happily down the road to work. So you, you did that all by yourself, right? You didn't need anyone to help you with this at all. But wait a minute. Let me ask you a question. Who made sure there was gasoline in the underground holding tank? Who put the washer fluid in the windshield wash bucket or the paper towels and the towel dispensers? My point is that someone was making, was working behind the scenes to make sure that your stop at 7-Eleven this morning went smoothly, weren't they? So the this, this same holds true for a self-serve storeroom. Very important to have somebody overseeing the process. Uh, a, a point here I want to bring out here uh, that I say on the slide is, is that this person has authority over all system users or at least a dotted line report. So if this, if this person, the process owner, is not, the, uh, is not the, themselves the maintenance supervisor, which is generally not the case, I, I think it's a, a great uh, idea to 
at least give a dotted line authority to this person so that this person has uh, input on uh, the performance evaluations for everybody that's, that's, that's touching the inventory. So I, I think that's a great way to put real you know, teeth into the process and, and hold people accountable. So once you've got your, your, your process owner identified, then, then it's time to, to make sure you've got robust tools in place. You know, setting up a process to be self-serve requires it to be very, very simple. And, you know, without the simplicity, you'll never, ever be able to count on a consistent results. And what I mean is when you, when you went to 7-Eleven this morning, for example, you didn't have to write down how many gallons you got on a piece of paper. I mean, if, if 7-Eleven depended on a sheet of paper to tell them how much gas to charge you for, how long do you think it would be before their inventory was off in the underground tank? Days, hours, maybe minutes. So I just recommend that you invest in the right software and hardware tools up front to set your process on the right footing. If you, if you don't have a good software package, eMate is a great one. And now's the time to get one. Um, make sure it's barcode capable. Uh, better yet, mobile capable. So they could use, uh, your people could use smartphones and things like that. Uh, consider utilizing dispensing machines. Um, there's a lot of great applications for those in the marketplace. You know, going back to that same public school district example, that not only did they have issues with communication, the, the second big mistake they made was that they they had invested all kinds of time um, and energy on the physical nature of the of the inventory and movement and that kind of thing, but they refused to invest anything in tools to get them a, de a, a decent software package to, to run that, that was simple, uh, any barcode scanners or anything like that to put the, the tools in the hands of the guys that were going to be managing this thing in the self-serve environment. So it was just a it was just a, a, a recipe for disaster, and quite and and and, uh, and actually, after about a year of trying to wrestle this thing to the ground, they finally decided to get a full-time storeroom attendant back. So, after all that time and effort, um, if you you know not putting the right tools in place, not not communicating well, it just it was kind of all for naught. So. We want to put those things, these you know, raise these these issues to you to make sure that you avoid them. And and you know, just bear in mind that there's, there's going to be cost involved. Um, I, I see a lot of companies that that go to a self-serve type environment, thinking they're just going to you know get a, a headcount off the payroll and continue uh, business as usual, and not make any investment in the the hardware or software. And and just know that if you if you're not prepared to do that, um, you're you're dealing yourself a really tough hand. So be prepared to spend some some money up front, and maybe you know the cost you that you the, the, that you expend in the first year might might even be more than you pay that person um, for for the for their payroll in in, in that year uh, could very well be. But just know that the savings will come in the following years after that if the process is managed well. So, but uh, but go in with your eyes open that there there is uh, there is going to be cost to uh, to set this up so it runs runs well. So once you've, you've identified what your tools are and things like that, then it's time to address your physical environment. And um, you know, as much as possible, I'm recommending that you consolidate all of the inventory that you can into one controlled space. I mean, it's a lot easier and less costly to monitor and manage one space than it is to manage a whole bunch of satellite areas that are spread all across your facility. So Try to try to keep it simple. It's a lot easier to manage that way. Now, I would recommend installing a security camera at the front door of the storeroom. And I know for some companies, security cameras are kind of like Big Brother watching, and it can be a touchy subject. But there's an old manage, management principle that says, "Don't expect what you don't inspect." And I think it applies here. And let's let's face it, everyone, we're human. I mean, if we if we could all be counted on to do the right thing all the time, we would have never needed the Ten Commandments. So security cameras are not a matter of trust so much as they're just a tool to help us manage our humanness. So just try to think of it that way, and it's a, it's a good tool. 
Secondly, uh, I, would, uh, I would really recommend you install a card access device, uh, entry device uh, at the door, and most definitely not a keyed lock. Um, what we find in the case where, where companies put in keyed locks, like a padlock or you know, some kind of a keyed cylinder, is that you know, even the most well-meaning supervisor or employee will lend their key to somebody and before you know it, that key has made its way around the entire department and you have no idea who has used that key or who's entered the storeroom. And that's important to know, uh, who, who's entering the storeroom from a control, a process control standpoint. So with a card access device, though, you can track who's entered the room and how long they've stayed. And then with that information, you can then match the entry log against the daily issues in eMain to whatever system you're running so that you can you can compare the two and, and find out who's entering the room without issuing a part. And we, we call that a null issues report. And how that looks is you might have a, 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 an employee who's, who you know has entered the room 10 times in the last two days, and, but he didn't issue anything. So that could be an indication of a couple of different problems. You, you know, uh, maybe he's not following the process. Maybe you don't have the right inventory. He's come in looking for parts ten times and never found it. So the key is to know about those instances, to be able to communicate with that employee and say, hey, you've come in looking for parts. You either didn't find them or you didn't issue them. Is there something, you know, is there a process thing we can help with from a training standpoint or, or do we need to work on our inventory levels or what is the case here? So, And that's always, uh, at that point, you know, you're, you, you may also want to look at the, the security camera video. Uh, to see uh, is, is this person you know walking out with a part or not. So once the physical space is set up, then it's time to to it really uh, back going back to the the Seven Eleven analogy. It's time to to put the paper towels in the in the dispensers, the water in the wash bucket, and and the fuel in the underground tank. And and as far as this con this presentation is what our topic today is the, the fuel really, is, is data, good quality data in your item master. Um, you, you've heard the adage a million times, you know, uh, garbage in, garbage out, but uh, it, it's true here. It, it, the best system in the world uh, is only as good as the information that you put in it. So very important to get a nice, uh, high quality item master. It's going to help you reduce your, your item lookup times, make it easier for users to, to find the parts they need. And just generally fuels an efficient system um, to to make that uh, much much better. And then secondly, you want to you want to set your min max levels to enable an auto replenishment mode. Uh, and you know put your re order quantities and reorder points in there. And then two, you want to assign a primary vendor to to every part that you possibly can, if not every one. Um, this could be a, a, a change for you from a purchasing standpoint too, depending where you, on where you are. You, uh, you know, back if, if you currently, if you still have a, a storeroom attendant full time, or back when you had one before, they probably spent a lot of their day uh, deciding who they're going to buy things from. Very, very oftentimes, that's the case. They might even do, they might be doing three bids in the buy for every single thing that they that they re, they replenish. Well, in a in a self serve environment, those days are kind of gone. It, it's time to move to a different strategy where your supply strategy is, I'm going to pick two to four uh, broad line suppliers that are able to supply 80 to 90 percent of everything I could ever need, negotiate great volume pricing with those people, and load those, those, uh, those, those vendors' names into the, into the, the system. So uh, we're looking to streamline here, and so we don't we don't want to add time to the mix by trying to decide okay who we're going to buy this from today. So th those decisions need to be locked in, and then then thirdly, you know, make sure that everything's barcode barcode labeled. Um, that's just going to make your hardware work. Obviously, if you've got a a smartphone that can scan a barcode, my goodness, let's let's make sure we can make make use of that, and then. Uh, the last thing there, point on this slide is, we oftentimes recommend, um, usually in fact, when you when you're going to a self-service environment, a lot of times you you are moving 
parts, you're consolidating parts to gain control in one central spot and so forth. So it's going to make good sense to do a physical count of everything just before your go live date so that you've got a good solid starting point for that for the inventory. So with respect to how your readiness for the, the, the readiness of your, your inventory data, um, we've got one other poll question we wanted to ask. Rona, if you would launch that uh, question, that would be great. Sure. Okay. Um, the question that Dan is asking is, how would you grade your current inventory's readiness for setting up a self-serve storeroom? All right, so we're just asking you in your opinion, um, on your own personal scale, I guess, <laughs> uh, on your own current inventory's readiness for setting up self-serve based on the criteria that Dan's mentioned. Are you an A, B, C, D, or F? Again, we won't share anyone's responses individually. Um, and please type them right into your keyboard and not into the questions feature uh, in GoToWebinar. And I see we've had about 70% of the votes in, so let me leave this open. Just a, a few more seconds. And OK, we're at 80%. So again, how would you grade your inventory's readiness to set up a self-serve storeroom? An A, B, C, D, or F? We'll see if people are harsh critics here. All right, it looks like the votes, oh, a couple more coming in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close it and share the results. And Dan, what we saw was, Oh, only 1% of our listeners today graded themselves an A. All right, I guess that's, that's why they're here. 19% uh, uh, said they were a B. 29% said a C. 31%, the largest response, said a D. And 20% rated themselves with an F. All right, so that's our own uh, listeners' self-assessment. Back to you, Dan. Okay, thank you, Rona. Well, well I appreciate that input and uh, uh, it's timely, timely topic. Uh, uh, obviously, just just based on who's on the phone here. So, thank you. Um, we're certainly here to help if you if you need it. I'll uh, run to the next slide here. That the uh, the next thing uh, that I would say you'd want to think about. Once you've got your physical space uh, and your inventory set, is to think about who you want to work with from a quality partner standpoint. And a couple different ways to think about that. One is to think about the fact that you now no longer have a full-time storeroom attendant. So the the day-to-day, -day, you know, the project work, the inventory projects, or even the quarterly cycle counts, things like that 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 had been getting done. Uh, may not be get done, or you may think you, you may discover you need help to get that done. So if you find yourself in that place where you at some point discover you need some outside support to make sure that your processes and your, your inventory stays on solid ground, um, TM2 is certainly able to help. There's other companies out there. We're, we're just one company that can help with that. So we'd be happy to. Just let us know. And then secondly, uh, think about who your key suppliers are and how, how you can partner with those those guys. Um, you probably, if I had to guess, probably 90% of everyone on the phone here have some kind of vendor managed inventory going on. Some distributor is doing something to to replenish, you know, your fasteners or whatever it might be, um, or replenishing just you know, just other specialty items. Um, more and more in the last oh couple years, a lot of, there's been a, a a huge influx of dispensing solutions that distributors are willing to to place a machine out there for you for a incremental sales commitment. So great, great opportunities to work with your with your key suppliers to take take that management and take that labor off of your back. So that's I think that's a great thing. One word of caution though I, I would share with you and that is be careful not to fall into the trap of letting just every distributor who thinks they can help you manage your inventory manage your inventory. Uh, this is the case where if there's too many chefs in the kitchen, it's, it's, 
the, the soup isn't going to turn out very well. So just be very careful how many you allow in. And, and you know, I, I would recommend, you know, pick two to four of your key suppliers, your broadline suppliers. You can provide the majority of what you buy, and that, they'll really be able to help you, uh, you know, control your inventory and, and take a lot, lot of labor off your hands. So the last slide is really uh, probably one of the most important, if not the most important, is, is to do adequate training, excellent training uh, of your end users. And, and by this point in the process, I'm, I'm assuming that, these, that the eternal pessimists in your group that we talked about earlier are enjoying fulfilling careers elsewhere. Uh, this is important enough that if you don't have somebody on board with you, they really need to be doing something else because this is this could this could this could bring your plant down um, quite quite literally. So uh, take that seriously. But for those that 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 are committed and ready to to make the change with you and make this successful, make sure that they have you know complete equipment and process training. You know, make them you know, have them demonstrate that they can do this in front of you, um, whether it be operating the, the scanners or uh, the terminal in the, in the, in the, uh, in the storeroom or, or, or a, a handheld smartphone, whatever it might be. Make sure that they can demonstrate that for you. And then set some, some expectations and explain what the compliance indicators are. Uh, for example, the null issues report. What, what is that? What, what are you looking for so that they know? If I come in here 10 times and don't issue something, uh, maybe I shouldn't even wait for somebody to come talk to me about it. Maybe I should go to, to, to my process owner and say, hey, I've come in here 10 times and haven't found what I needed. Uh, you know, we, we've got to fix something here. So if they know what you're looking for, it sure makes it a lot, a lot better environment. They can help you succeed. Um, accuracy and replenishment is a, is a key issue that, that's, that's very important to get trained up right. Uh, obviously, we want to try to, try to have, uh, to the extent that it's possible, if your suppliers can do a lot of that replenishment for you, that's wonderful. But you, you're not going to you're not going to have all of your replenishment done by your suppliers, unfortunately. So there's going to be some level of replenishment that somebody's going to be doing. So and if 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 the person that's putting those parts back on, uh, on the shelf on the receipt is putting it in the wrong place, that's that's a big big problem. So so checking for accuracy when something came in, did it go to the right place? Very important. And and just from a just and, and just be prepared to repeat that training over and over on a periodic basis. Obviously, you're going to be training new employees as they come on board. But even in the case where you have what what might appear to be a compliance issue, where somebody you know maybe they're not trying to break the system, they just don't fully understand how to use the system. So just we want to make sure that you you know you stay on top of the training aspect and make sure everybody's up and, and current with how the process is supposed to run. So with that, I think those are the key steps to, to, to make, your, make yourself successful with a storeroom, a self-serve storeroom. And uh, with that, I'll, uh, I want to let you know that, as, as Rona mentioned, I'm happy to make this presentation available to anybody that wants a copy. Just email me there directly at my email address there on the screen and be happy to send that to you. So.